I say we grease this rat fuck son of a bitch right now. It just doesn't make any goddamn sense. He figured that he could get an alien back through quarantine if one of us was impregnated. Whatever you call it. And then frozen for the trip home. Nobody would know about the embryos we were carrying. Me and Newt. Wait a minute now. We don't know. Yes, the only way he could do it is if he sabotaged certain freezers on the way home. Namely yours. Then he could jettison the bodies and make up any story he liked. Fuck! He's dead. You dog me, pal! Welcome back to our humble San Diego podcast. We are your hosts for the evening, Chris Pollock and I, Wesley the Swan Swanson. This week we say goodbye to the month of July with another review under our Summer of Sci-Fi banner. If you tuned into our last episode, then you should be aware that uh, our focus will be, for tonight, our focus will be director James Cameron's mid-80s masterpiece, Aliens. And with that, we give you episode 280 Ripley's Revenge. What's up, dude? How are you? What's up? I was wondering which title you were going to go with. And now for a special news report. Brought to you by Drop the Mic. Do you have anything for us this week? I didn't really see much. I have just a couple pieces. Uh, no, that's all you. I have I have some, some shout-outs, but you do the news first. Okay. Uh, first up, I guess... It looks like um, a Tomb Raider sequel will not be happening after all. With it having been revealed recently, the MGM lost the film rights as of this past May after failing to greenlight a part two. Uh, once another studio becomes involved, another reboot will likely happen. Uh, actress Alicia Vikander will now be out of the conversa- conversation. Do you, have you, a- you you saw that movie. Did you like it? I remember you saying it, it was more in line with what the video games were. Yeah, I mean... Or at least the, the rebooted video game. Yes, because, the re, you know, I felt like they, they didn't... Uh, it wasn't super stylized the way that the Jolie stuff was. Mm-hmm. Um, I did like the newer... Um, film i wish it was rated r the way that the because the the rebooted games were rated m so they were they had this kind of grit to them Mm -hmm. that still was glossed over in the movie uh, of course to probably uh you know so kids could come and watch it and whatever you know money wise Mm -hmm. um but but it was good good cast it was fun she did a good job um but i guess yeah that they they lost the rights that's weird because I didn't know that MGM had it. I don't. I thought Paramount had them because those were the Joey movies at least were Paramount. I didn't. I don't remember who did uh, the Vikander movie. Earlier this week, A twenty four released the first official trailer for the upcoming Thai West prequel Pearl. The film is slated for September sixteenth, twenty twenty two, and is the follow up to X, which was released back in March. Did you watch this did- yet? I didn't see X yet. I have seen the trailer for Pearl. That's crazy. Like, did he make those movies back to back then? Yeah. So, um, since you haven't seen X, I can't say much. I don't want to spoil anything for you because I th- think that you'll uh, like X a lot, in my yeah. opinion. Um, but yeah, he, I guess he shot this prequel uh, secretly because he okay. had yeah yeah uh, somehow he had leftover budget or something, and then he just threw together uh and did a secret um movie which is why it's so close to you know the first one coming out it's fucking insane yeah uh, well it, i'd be surprised that he had the budget left because he seems like a guy that knows how to work on a low budget and especially because this new one pearl is like said in 1918 so it's a period piece mm-hmm. uh, and i mean i guess uh x was too because it takes place in the 1970s but yeah this one goes back even further so i'm wondering how he was able to pull that off that's pretty fascinating but isn't that same actress in x too uh what's her name mia goth yes that's cool when i when i see x i'll make sure to watch pearl 
Definitely. Are you uh, are you excited for? Uh, are you going to go watch um, Marcel the Shell with shoes on at all? I want to see it. I like the shorts a lot. Yeah, I have to. I have to see. It, it, I think it's finally out wide. For a while, it was like super limited. Yeah, but I think it's out wide finally. I'll t- I'll take a look and see what the schedule's like. And I think everything uh, all at once is uh, back in theaters now or something. I saw that. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure you've covered this because this is a few weeks ago, but Jimmy Kahn, James Kahn passed away. Yes. Um, just wanted to shout him out. Good actor. Man, check out Thief. If you've never seen Thief, that's like Michael Mann's first movie. And James Kahn is so goddamn good in that movie. Um, obviously, The Godfather. Misery. Even Spoiler alert for a 50 year old movie, he dies about halfway through. And uh, misery, yeah, misery rules. Um, the Gambler, have you ever seen The Gambler with uh, Wahlberg? Uh, the, the, the original film, the Wahlberg movie is a remake. No, I don't think I've seen the no, the original uh, is James Caan in the Wahlberg part, really? And yeah, good movie. Good movie. Although I did, I did enjoy the the Wahlberg film as well. I'll have to check that out. I didn't know that. So I wanted to shout him out. Bottle Rocket. He's great in Bottle Rocket. And uh, he's in. Uh, he's the dad in Elf too, right? He's the dad in Elf. He's very good in The Way of the Gun. But The Way of the Gun is Ryan Philippi. Yeah, Ryan Philippi and Benicio del Toro. I remember. Um, but James Caan is like the the main the main henchman to the crime boss in that movie, and he's so good. So shout him out. Uh, also, got to shout out Tony Sirico. Yes, who passed away. You know, he was probably most well known as Polly Walnuts on The Sopranos. And even though The Sopranos is a show, I just kind of half like. Because I think the later seasons got disappeared up their own ass. <laughs> um, he was like Sirico was great as Polly Walnuts. Like I can't I can't fault the cast. I can only fault the writing in those those later seasons. But he's also he's he's got a bit part in in uh, Goodfellas. He pops up in Goodfellas. He pops up in Dead Presidents, a movie that we've talked about. He pops up in Copland, the movie that we've talked about. Small, small bit rolls, but he's in them. So shout him out. And then just this last week, speaking of Goodfellas, we lost Paul Sorvino. Yeah, what a bummer. Uh, Super good. Obviously, great in Goodfellas. Uh, Just some other movies that he's very good in. Uh, Dick Tracy. Yes. He's great. He's great in Dick Tracy as a Lips Manless. Um, Nixon, he's very good in Oliver Stone's Nixon. He's um, Henry Kissinger in that. The Cooler, have you ever seen The Cooler? With William Macy and, and Alec Baldwin? Uh, I don't think so. Oh, check that movie out, man. Bill Macy's like a, a real like sad sack loser. He's, he's the guy that if people are winning big. At a, at a casino they send William Macy out who's kind of like the bad luck charm and then these people will start losing yeah and uh, Paul Sorino's in that very good and a personal favorite movie of mine uh, that I want to shout out that I think is super underrated is The Rocketeer and Paul Sorino's great in that playing the gangster trying to get his hands on the jetpack and then uh, at the end, when the Nazis show up, he kind of like changes sides and he fights. He fights along the cops and everything because even though he, he he has a great line where he says, "Hey, I might I might not make an honest buck, but I'm a hundred percent American," and he chooses to to fight with the cops against the Nazis or the FBI guys against the Nazis. Check out the Rocketeer. Is what I'm saying because the Rocketeer is great. So shout out to Paul Sorvino, shout out to James Kahn, shout out to Tony Sirico. 
Uh, I think there's a couple other people I'm missing that have passed away in the last week or two. And forgive me, I did not write those down. And now it's time for the weekly recommendations. Let's see. Besides the old man and the gun. Um, a movie I, that was one of my original recommendations was The Night House. Have you seen The Night House? Yeah. With hell Rebecca yeah. Hall? Yes. Oh, dude, I watched it last week. It's so creepy. Very, very good. It's it's really good. It's I was surprised it's not an A24 movie, but it feels like one. Yes. I think it's Fox Searchlight. But uh, very good. I think Rebecca Hall's always been an underrated actress. That's uh, David. Was It's David Bruckner, right? Yeah, right? Yeah, yes, I think yeah, so. Yeah. Uh, very good. I was thoroughly creeped out the entire movie. She's playing a woman who's grieving the loss, the suicide of her husband. And that's all I want to say. Creepy shit ensues. Yeah, the movie's bonkers. It's so way, way better than you could have ever expected. Yeah. I watched yeah. it. A, I watched it a couple weeks ago on Max, and I was just like, "Holy shit!" Like. This is giving me everything I could want in a movie like this, you know? Yeah, you and I are on the same page because I watched it in that time frame, probably off of Cinemax or HBO or something as well. And yeah, uh, really, really dug it. Very creeped out the entire film. And uh, really, really shout out Rebecca Hall. She's she's great. I don't think she gets the, the do as much. Yeah. But she's great. And she's got a new movie out called Resurrection that sounds like pretty great too. I don't know when I don't know if that's out this week or if it's coming or if that's limited. Uh but I saw that, that that was coming, like her and Tim Roth. Oh really? I didn't I haven't heard anything about that. Yeah. Well when we when we wrap, uh see if you can look that trailer up. I will. So that's my First, technically second recommendation, and one, we're talking aliens, we're going to be talking about the late, great Bill Paxton. I want to shout out A Simple Plan, which I think is such a fucking good movie, is so underrated, it's a Sam Raimi movie, which is probably the best movie Sam Raimi ever made outside of the Evil Dead movies. Um, and Bill Paxton, Billy Bob Thornton, Bridget Fonda, Gary Cole. Oh man, they are so good in that movie. It's a really great piece of noir. It's almost it's it's definitely a like kind of Fargo slash No Country for Old Men, Coen Brothers feel to it. Like a, a very a very dark noir film. And like I said, it feels like a Coen Brothers movie, even though it's not, but it was made by one of their best friends in Sam Raimi. And Paxton is so fucking good in the movie. I wish that that movie got more recognition. Is it uh, streaming anywhere? Uh, I think it's streaming on Max, on HBO Max. I'm sure it's, it's streaming elsewhere. Even if you have to rent it off Amazon for a few bucks, it's worth it. I've seen it before, uh, but just it's been a while. Oh, man. I figured you would be like a big champion of it, but it sounds like you've only seen it like once or twice. Yeah, I, I don't even... That slipped my mind that it's even Sam Raimi did it. <laughs> yep, it's a Sam Raimi... It's, bro, there was a while in like the late 90s, in between like Army of Darkness and when he made Spider-Man where Sam Raimi made a lot of interesting films that just were not the type of movies that you would expect from him. Yeah. And like quick and the dead is one, which I know you've, you've, you've spoken about on the, on the show before, which is a really fun Western, which has a lot of the Sam Raimi touchstones in it. Yes. And the simple plan is one of them. And it's, it's like I said, it's, it's a really great, a really great noir film. Like Midwest, snowy, noir. That's why I say it's like a good a good mix of Fargo and No Country for Old Men. 